Hello and welcome back and today we want to continue looking at the WD Red SA500 NAS based SSD. Now we've already done um, a session of testing on a desktop PC but now we've got two of these SSDs in a RAID 1 environment where we're going to be doing some read write tests with these disks. Later on we're going to be using this for cache tests and of course testing and comparing against the Seagate Ironwolf series. But for now, let's take a good look at this drive. Now, it's worth mentioning I'm in an open area right now, and I've got several servers around me, so I do apologize if the sound is a little bit hazy there on the edge. I'll try my best to make sure I'm as clear as possible. Now, you can see that I've installed, or I should say uh, written, 120 gig of data on this RAID 1 environment. That's two 500 gig SSDs. If we head over to the file station area, we can see and scroll down to the shared folder I've created. And we can see that I've also got a RAID 1 of traditional hard drives as well. Now, before I go any further, I think it's worth quickly showing you a little bit of a performance difference between hard drives and SSD. Don't use this as any means to rate the drives. This is just some idea about the kind of performance difference you would get between hard drives and SSD. If you already know that, skip forward a few minutes, but for example, if we use this, if we use both of these folders now, and we copy them here, and we're going to copy these files, and these are, again are at around 120 gigabytes. It's just going to quickly calculate that, and remember this is using mechanical hard drives here, so that's 119 gig there, and this is just using the normal hard drives. That's two WD Red 4TB drives. If we were to try to open up and create a new folder, call this one test close that folder, open that up and copy this in. If we paste into that directory, we'll be able to see that the expected completion time for this operation should be pretty huge. As you can see, it's already listed now at an hour and that number will reduce, but not by a huge amount. The speed of this right procedure will take a great deal of time. So, I'm just going to stop that operation there. That was really just to give you a benchmark of how long that would take, typically. But the one we want to talk about, of course, is the WD Red SSDs. And what we're going to do is we're going to get our stopwatch lined up, and we are going to see just how long it takes for this system to do exactly that same operation on the SSDs. Remember, today's video is about seeing how these SSDs perform. I'm going to wait until I've completed all three to four parts of my overview of this disc before my final judgment. And we're on video two of three, potentially four. So we've already done our copy. We're going to create a directory. And this time we're going to create this file here two more times. So I'm not just going to do one copy. I'm going to do two copies simultaneously. That will almost fill up this SSD, at least fill it two thirds of the way. So once again, we've done our copy. Let's get our read write ready and let's get started. Okay, we're going to create a folder, call this folder number one. We're going to create another folder and call this folder number two. Then we're going to go into folder one and we're going to paste. Then we're going to come out of there, go into folder number two and we're going to paste. We're also going to leave this up here as it prepares this operation. And we're already seeing, do you remember that time when it was one hour? Huge difference there. And while all of this is going on, what we also want to do is to have this performance uh, resource monitor giving us some idea just how hard the system is working. So we're going to leave that in the background. And of course, the ones that we want to focus on are the memory, the CPU, and disk utilization. Now, I am going to fast forward this in a bit, but it is worth highlighting that today's tests are being conducted on a Synology DS1019+. Plus. It's an 8 gig model, and it arrives with um, a Celeron-based CPU, and that is a quad-core J3455. So I do recommend you check that NAS out. We will be utilizing this same NAS for doing a comparison between both the SA500 WD Red SSDs and the Iron Wolf 110s. Without further ado, I'm just going to fast forward now towards uh, the completion of this task so we can see just how long it took for this NAS to create um, 
240 gig of data in two separate instances simultaneously. Let's fast forward. Right, so we're coming into the last 10% here of these copy procedures. We've crossed over the 20 minute line and while it's closing in on the end of this, I thought it would be worth just taking a very quick look at the storage manager. Because in the storage manager we can see that the overall capacity is starting to fill. But at the same time, we can look here on the bottom and we can look at some of these other drives. Now, the way these drives are completely filled Right, so we're closing in on the last 5% of our dual copy procedures. Straight away you can see up here we've got 4 or 5% left. We can see that the CPU and memory hasn't been too taxed and that the speeds we've been getting have been centering between 80 and around about 110 to 120 megabits per second. It's taken about 20 minutes, which is fairly respectable. And if we look at the storage manager, we can see that we've probably filled up about two thirds of that overall storage. There we go, we can see the storage pool there, and we're starting to really fill up there with data. So right now, the operation is just about to finish. Let's give that just a moment, just to finish its procedure. And we can get the clock up there and see that if we minus the time it took to do the actual action of copy pasting, because we had to do it in a very straightforward and transparent way, we can say that this has taken around 23 minutes to commit this operation and effectively fill this SSD with data. So we go, we'll close that up there and it's you know largely filled up the entire available storage pool. So next, what we want to do is see how long it takes to empty all of this data. We're going to delete all the data on these disks and then from there, we're just gonna see how long it takes to flush it. Now you may have noticed we do not have and a recycling bin enabled for this drive. We've not enabled it. If we go to the volume there, we can see going into it from the 360 remaining, we've not enabled any kind of recycle bin there, even on the actual disk itself, not just the share. So what we're gonna do now is delete these and it should be near enough instantaneous. I'm not gonna bother activating the clock while doing this, but why not? We'll reset it there in the background but a deletion of this data should be nigh on instantaneous. We'll get that data starting to be deleted. We can move up here and then we can see the deletion procedure happening in real time. Uh, it's jumping up remarkably quickly and we can go to the utilization of the disk here and we'll be able to see the spikes slowly appear on this resource monitor. Uh, the data is being deleted, the CPU has leapt up because uh, contrary to popular belief, deleting files actually does take a lot more work than you'd think. Um, on top of that, while this is completing this deletion procedure, we can make our way into the storage manager and once again, take a look at how much data is now going to be available on that storage pool. Moving there, open that up, go into the volume that we've created and now we can see that the volume is dipping down dramatically and if we refresh this, this window, that data should largely be gone. Make our way into there, but apparently we're still seeing 188 meg. So where is this 188 meg? Let's go into the folders and find out where this lives. This may well be file installations. This It's not gonna be a recycling background tool, but for now, we'll focus on that in the next part of the video. What I want to do now is, once again, just do a very quick copy of all of that data. And to make it nice and quick, we're just gonna copy the same data from another SSD on the device. So let's copy that data over to our SSD RAID. Copy that over there. This shouldn't take too long at all because we're not doing simultaneous copy. 
And while that, when this is completed, we're going to start with our archiving. So in our archive tests, we are then going to start compressing these files into two different directories. Once that's done, we see how long it takes for them to complete the compression. We're then going to remove one of our WD SSDs from the NAS and then introduce a new one to see how long it takes the device to rebuild our RAID. But I'm going to fast forward to the completion of this copy procedure so we can fill this drive up with data once again and we can carry on looking at this WD SSD. Right, so we've got the data on our SSDs back and now we want to do the bench testing of compression. What we're gonna do is create two zipped directories of one of each of these folders simultaneously to see how long it takes the Synology NAS to do it with this disk. So without further ado, let's get started. Gonna add that to an archive. Not archive, we're gonna add that to a zip. So we will then compress that one and then we'll compress this one. And then at the same time, we will leave this to run in the background and we'll get our clock started now. So let's see how long it takes to commit these compressions. Now, it's worth highlighting that the CPU plays its part here. This is a huge amount of data that we're compressing and therefore it's worth bearing in mind that this is not going to be an easy task for this Celeron CPU. First and foremost, look at that CPU jump there in the background. That's utilizing a hell of a lot of CPU power in order to perform this task. Each of these individual folders make up somewhere between 50 to 60 gigabytes each. I think a little bit over for both of them. So I reckon we are gonna be looking at quite a long time here for the completion of this exercise. And what we'll do is we'll follow up towards the end here and get this fast forwarded to the completion of this exercise, whereupon we will do the final test, which is going to be our RAID test. So coming in a little over 50 minutes, we've got our two archive zip files already created. We've got those all there. So next what we're going to do is simulate a RAID failure. What we're going to do is remove one of the drives from this device and we're going to see how long it takes for the system to rebuild. So we're going to double check which drives in the machine are the ones that we're going to be pulling today. Make my way there, we find out it's bays four or uh, three or four, and I'm going to simulate a RAID rebuild now. One second. Shortly, we're going to notice the system say that the RAID has degraded, and you should hear a beeping in the background. If we go into the storage manager, we'll see that the RAID volume has degraded because one of the SSDs has been removed. If we head over to the storage pools, we can see the degradation happening there. And what I'm going to do is now reintroduce another WD500 gig SSD. The new SSD has now been added to the system and if we reset the clock from earlier we can see when the system has recognized that a new drive has been added to the degraded storage pool and from here we can click action and repair. We can drag this disk over here, confirm that this is the disk we want to use, it's very early days for these SSDs and we'll click next and begin the RAID rebuild. Right down here and we'll start the clock. And now we're going to see how long it takes for the RAID rebuild to take place. Now, given this is a 500 gig SSD, 
this should be a very fast rebuild compared with that of traditional mechanical hard drives. But nevertheless, let's see how long it takes for the RAID rebuild to take place. And we're closing in now on the completion of the RAID rebuild on these WD SA500 NAS SSDs. We're up to 97% completion and it's taken just over half an hour for this completion. So pretty good speed, it has to be said, given to put it into perspective, we've got the 14 TB drives also undergoing a RAID rebuild for another video happening right now. Hopefully after this, I'll connect to that NAS to give you some sense of perspective about the difference between RAID rebuild times. Now, after this, I will be performing some direct 10 GBE tests, as well as, of course, those Seagate versus WD videos for a future piece of content. But we're about to finish the complete RAID re re rebuild and resynchronization of the RAID 1 of the SSDs, and we're coming up on it now. We're getting real close. The consistency check is almost completed here at the top. And now it's going to resynchronize that. But that is the completion of this RAID rebuild for us here. It's all ready. And we'll go there, go back down. And now the resynchronization has been completed. The RAID is rebuilt. And once again, that time was a little over 35 minutes. So I'm going to wrap things up here. Hope you've enjoyed it, guys. Um, before we go, I will uh, like allude to a little tip for you guys. That I've learned about uh, in the last few hours that I was actually quite unaware of. The fact that there are performance uh, tests that can be used within this storage manager. So for example, let's have a look at the hard drives and let's do a general performance test of one of those SSDs. Let's perform the benchmark test of that SSD. This will test the read and write IOPS and throughput as well as of course the latency and access time store for us and i'm going to end things on this video while we get the results of that test using our synology nas a pentium powered one as well so with any luck this will give us some pretty good results but otherwise i'm going to wrap things up here because i think this might take a little longer than i anticipated and i'll see you guys next time